Good morning. So the word on the street is this. This is just too hard. And what am I talking about? Uh, the state of Texas, electrician license exams. And I have some people near and dear to me who have said, hey, this these exams, whether it's, you know, the wire in, the master's, too hard, too hard. We can't do this. And then, of course, I'm trying to be encouraging. I say, you know what? I took this test. and I, I passed it. I mean, it's doable because I'm not the smartest guy in the room at all. They said, no, it's so much harder now. When you took the test, James, it was super easy. And now, now they make you work for it. You know, James, when you took the test, you probably just had to make some marks on the wall with a piece of coal and grunt, identify a wire, and they gave you the, the license and you walked out. So I took an exam yesterday. And uh, just to prove a point, I've got some stories to share with you. So what does it mean I'm saying too hard? So a lot of the Texas electrician exams, the pass rate on average is dismal. It's under 30%. It's a little bit better for the residential appliance installer, or I'll just say rail, because it's less of a mouthful. But a lot of people are looking at the rail test in Texas because there's no experience required. You still have to sit and take the test. And I can see for somebody who is new how that test would be super challenging. I took the test yesterday primarily um, so that I would have credibility. I took the master's test and passed it back in 2010. Um, but I realized is I hadn't sat and taken a test from the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation for 13 years. And maybe I wasn't bringing anything super fresh to the table. So tomorrow when we're doing prep and these other courses, we're focusing on what I call um, establishing a grind and following your, your grind. Test prep comes down to knowing how you, how you learn, three learning styles, and then study and do it consistently, okay? So real quick, just sort of a peek behind the curtain on the test. And this isn't anything specific to what I did yesterday, so I'm not revealing or any secrets or breaching any confidence things that I agreed not to do. This stuff you can find online. But for me, you got these different areas. A lot of people are like, well, what's, what's the test about? So on the front end, they will actually tell you how many questions are total and then what areas have how many questions. So for instance, I had uh, 12 questions in calculations in the theory. I had GFI protection equipment grounding, 15 questions. Wiring methods and electrical materials, 10 questions. Electrical equipment and devices, 15 questions. Motors and control devices, 10 between them. Again, it's a beginner test. And then because this is geared towards people who work in the swimming pool industry for servicing and installing equipment, there was 18 questions or a pretty high percentage overall on swimming pool, spas, and fountain equipment. So that's very specific to this test. So in the prep, I had a short time and so really to encourage you guys who are looking at taking a test in Texas, especially, but anywhere, um, there's all kinds of stuff. I got tabs. I've never used tabs in my life in the last 30 years. I broke down. I got some tabs. I added some tabs to my code book. Guess what I didn't use, but maybe twice. Part of it's because I'm not used to using tabs. Um, I also made fun of the proctor, the lady who was administering the test. She gave me a little digital notebook. And I said, what, what am I doing with this? And she goes, well, that's where you take your notes. And I just stared at her. It worked, obviously. I'm used to yeah, this. Um, I also used the calculator. The first few times I've taken a test, I did all my math longhand and still did fine. So taking the residential appliance, the rail test, the secret to any of this, and it's not really a secret, is you have to understand, you have to be in the code book consistently. And I'm, I'm going to refer to this as the grind. The seminar I'm teaching tomorrow isn't, isn't a guarantee of passing the test. It is guaranteeing if you will do the work, if you, that you can establish the grind that works for you and then apply that to your timeline and you will pass the test. That's not magic. Um, most people 
don't know how to set up their own grind, their own routine, and they're not motivated enough or have a big enough motivation to stick to it until they take their test and pass. But that's it. It's not, it's not magic. Um, the studying is fun. There's a lot of materials out there. I use Mike Holt. PSI has their stuff. And for me, the grind was twice a day for 20 or 30 minutes. I opened my laptop and took practice tests and looked stuff up with my code book. Uh, that's the grind. So a lot of you are like, is that it? And it's like, yeah. A lot of you would even say, well, why do I need to go to a, a class or watch a class to do that? Based off the results of the test and the results of my practice tests, most of us don't know how to sustain anything longer than a week or two. Most of us also, in actually taking the test, aren't able to sit in a chair focused on one thing for more than maybe an hour or two. I was, yesterday in the test, I was getting twitchy after about 45 minutes. And I was motivated. I was dialed. I wanted to pass this test. I didn't want to teach a seminar tomorrow after having failed a test yesterday. Um, so the grind, the discipline of this is so valuable because it allows you to sit and focus on something for two or three, four hours. And it also disciplines your mind to work in that structure of, here's a question, are you reading it accurately? Do you know what they're asking? And then you're searching for something specific. And you think, well, of course, that's so easy, but it's not. Our whole life is built around constantly changing information, constantly changing images, and never following linear. So what I'm talking about primarily is social media. It's not bad, but to be honest, social media as a consumption doesn't help us mentally pass tests. So, and that's what this is all about, passing a test. The bigger motivation, you pass a test, you get more pay. You pass a test, you have more credibility. Um, and the other thing that's not as much publicized, I learned a bunch of stuff yesterday, just again, hunting for questions during the test that I didn't know were there. I used the 2023 I have a lot more work to do. I'm a master electrician. It's my job to train people, run a company. And uh, there was a bunch of stuff that I went back through checking my, my questions. There was a lot of stuff that I learned yesterday. Um, it was really cool. So for the rail test right now, we're under 50% pass rate for last year. Um, I think there's a huge need. I think for what we're doing, what I'm starting to do on this test prep is simply, again, helping people develop a grind and then getting confident in doing their grind. After that, it's a matter of timeline. How far out are you going? Quick aside, uh, this is really weird, but 4,200 subscribers, thank you. So much appreciate that. Back to regular programming. Um, I think that's where the value is. And I think in the test prep that I did, um, having some kind of structure and accountability I think in, in what we're doing again starting tomorrow is the fact that I've taken the test and passed it. Um, I know what they're really talking about. I'm not going from, I took a test 13 years ago and passed it. Or with a lot of the, uh, I think the seminars and stuff that's going out there when I've dug into it deeper, there are people who made it, have never taken a test. They're just good at structuring study. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'll do another video after tomorrow, after we do the, the class and let you know what's going on. You all take care. Thank you.